President Grimson, distinguished guests, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in the beginning, it's my utmost pleasure uh, to thank you, the Arctic Circle, and all the Chinese hosts and organizers, not only for inviting me for this event, but also allowing me to participate in such an interesting and forward-looking discussions that are taking place in this conference. Well, this is my first uh, visit to China, and with this, it's not only feeds my professional interest dealing with the Arctic issues, but also contributes to my personal ones. However, knowing the time frame and the discipline uh, I have to be, um, in this short intervention of mine, which is titled, Is there a better solution for the Arctic than regional cooperation? Poland and its Arctic policy principles, I would like to concentrate on a few issues that are related to this topic and uh, of, this, of this regional cooperation in the Arctic and from the perspective of my country. And for me, it's a bit unusual situation, but for the discipline I mentioned, I will be reading my address. Otherwise, when I apply a sort of free speech, I'm too quick and too talkative and then Definitely, I will not uh, keep the discipline of the time. Ladies and gentlemen, in 2017, President of Finland, Sali Ninisto, said, I quote, if we lose the Arctic, we will lose the whole world, at the end of the quote. It corresponds perfectly. We've just completed the Finnish two years chairmanship in already mentioned Arctic Council, and where the Finns put so much efforts to explore, as they call, common solutions that might support a better future. It is great to acknowledge that Iceland, who just took over the chairmanship, will pursue this ambitious program in this respect. Poland, is not surprisingly, as the other states, assesses closely the scale and the scope of potential scenarios that may occur in the future, both in the Arctic and all the consequences that are uh, having impact for the Arctic coming from the outside world. Even though that some might try to challenge it, the climate change is real, and according to the majority of the research results, it is, plaking, is taking place in the Arctic twice as fast as in the other parts of the world. Therefore, it already causes and will cause substantial changes in the region, that might have implications to overall environmental as well as geopolitical, economic, social, and even security perspectives. Needless to say that we are concerned with all those developments that are taking place and we put so much attention to those phenomena. So the question arises how we, as international community, may further address those challenges, opportunities, and also open marks as to the future of the region. A genuine partnership, in my humble opinion, is one of the most important key vehicles on the path that leads us, hopefully, to achieve a better future for the Arctic. Poland has launched the process of adopting general policy, polar policy that would obviously encompass the Arctic as well. One of our general national objectives that is related to our long-standing polar expedition and research in the past, is to remain present and active when it comes to the Arctic portfolio and cooperate with all the partners at stake. However, this activeness implies full openness and partnership, especially by acknowledging and respecting the rights and regulations related to the Arctic states, indigenous peoples, and other initiatives. It is, in a way, binding for our national institutions and actors. Ladies and gentlemen, Poland is an observer of, of the Arctic Council since the beginning of 1996. During the Arctic Silk Forum in Seoul last, last September, a Japanese friend, Ambassador Yamamoto, stated that it is time to move from observership to maybe a partnership when it comes to the cooperation within the Arctic Council with all the Arctic partners as well. It was somehow echoed during the last Arctic Council in Rovaniemi 
a few days ago, although sometimes maybe in a bit different context. The opinion corresponds with the activities of the observers, both at the expert level, like already mentioned by my predecessors in the working groups, task forces, and other initiatives, but also at semi-political level. This contribution shall be continued as the most appropriate way of support to overall, overall, overall co collaboration. As to the latter, and responding in a way to the growing need of more intensive dialogue and cooperation between the Council and the observers, we, as Poland, launched in 2010 the initiative called Warsaw Format, a platform of dialogue and exchange of views between current Arctic Council senior official chair and representatives, namely diplomats, of the Arctic Council observer states and the EU. This platform is fully transparent, transparent towards the Arctic Council and is closely linked to it, providing, I believe, additional substantial support to the work of this initiative. And by the way, China is also a very active member of this format. One of the results of this proactive role that was took up by the observers in the first, uh, is the first ever maritime uh, workshop that will be held under the PAME umbrella in London on the 4th of June, and we're under the auspices of the joint project led by US, Republic of Korea, Italy, Poland, and the Nordic Forum. The participants will address the issues of recommendations and potential best scenarios in order to uh, provide sa uh, safe and secure maritime traffic in the Arctic. Thirdly, uh, this year Poland celebrates 15th anniversary of its accession to the EU. Consequently, Poland supports the objectives and conclusions of the EU Arctic strategy from 2016 and other related instruments and programs. And sim simultaneously, by our active role in um, involving in this region, we somehow implement and contribute to this process of implementation. This engagement is very visible through different EU programs, regional support, as well as scientific activities, which Ambassador Shapui mentioned just, uh, just before my presentation. And as my Swedish friend just said, the Operation Mosaic that is taking place comprises both the EU member states, but also the countries outside of it, and also where China, Poland, France, Sweden, just to mention, among other 17 nations, is taking part. And it, dear, dear ladies and gentlemen, it was mentioned in different forums, but also it was mentioned today by my predecessor, uh, predecessors, the Arctic shall remain a low tension area. This is all, also our goal as, as Poland, and we are initially open and in favor to discuss and potentially look for more effective links between different policies all around the world and maybe within the European Union, how we can address those, uh, address those issues. We got used to the fact that the current cooperation in the High North is peaceful and effective in general. However, it doesn't um, justify us not to do nothing and to concentrate and cooperate further to remain this environment as it is. However, let me conclude those remarks maybe with some symbolic, in my opinion, a very illustrative example confirming the general assumption that disregards tensions or difficulties or disagreements on the higher scale or in the global scale, the people-to-people -people approach and peaceful cooperation on the regional character has a big chances to prevail, and it shall prevail. Probably not many of you heard that the first ever pilot that flew over the Arctic was my countryman, Jan Nagurski. In 1914, he performed altogether five flights over the Arctic Sea and the North Pole, trying to save Russian polar explorers who vanished those days during the expeditions. He spent more than 10 hours and com completed five flights using the French airplane Farman MF-11. Ultimately, unfortunately, he was unable to deliver the success of its mission, but he did not hesitate to make an attempt. 
Perhaps I might be called too optimistic, but I want to believe that we all, as international community, will be able to keep the Arctic safe and take utmost, utmost efforts working together within different trans-regional cooperative platforms to make the future sustainable, profitable and better. In this conclusion, once again, I thank you all, all behind this important and interesting event and thank you very much for your attention.